you know, Trump is an overt fascist, but Biden is going to be just kind of covertly fascist. And when people are protesting because the, the third, the economic collapse is coming, right? That's coming. <laughs> There's no way to stop that. There's 30 million foreclosures coming. There's going to be more layoffs. There's a commercial real estate bubble that is, I mean, it is collapsing. It is, it's going to be brutal. They haven't passed another stimulus plan. So when that happens under Joe Biden, I don't, is, is that going to wake the vote? Any blue will do crowd up. I mean, are they then going to finally go? Oh, Joe Biden is snatching up people in unmarked vans. Maybe. I mean, the, the, uh, in port, like when are they going to wake up? I mean, the, the Trump supporters, some of them are just are crazy. They're threatening people with guns and all that stuff. But when are people going to wake up on both sides that we're in class warfare? Not, it's not, a race war. It's not all this other. When, when, when is that going to happen? Uh, uh, I don't think it's going to happen, Graham, because in order for people to wake up to that, they need someone to articulate it. They need a bunch of people to do that. And those people need to get in the media. And that's not happening. I mean, right now, with we, even with the media lying to the people over and over about the about Medicare for all, you turn on CNN, they're going to tell you, Jake Tapper will tell you it costs more than our current system. They'll all scare, they'll all scare you that it's socialism, that it's this and it's that. You know, even with that, 72 percent of Americans, which means a lot of conservatives are for Medicare for all. So even with that. So but but what is it going to take for people? The media is it's just completely bought. You can't, they can just, they can make people think that a Jewish guy is an anti-Semite. I mean, they, 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 I mean, at no point after, after Iraq, did the media question us, what we were doing in Libya? Did the media question what we're doing in Yemen? The media cheered on what we were doing in Syria. They're, they're not still, I mean, even after the Afghanistan papers, they're still trying to paint. The problem is somehow Tulsi Gabbard wanting to get us out of war. It's just crazy after the Afghan papers proved that Joe Biden and Barack Obama were just as big of pieces of shit warmongers as anybody else. And still nothing is it. So I just I think that the corruption of the media has really fucked us. And, you know, whenever there's a revolution, normally the first thing they do is they take over the radio and TV and newspaper. Right. Uh, but they already did that. Right. So we're, they got that here. And. There, that's why places like your show and my show gets throttled so hard by the Google algorithms, right? And why and why people who are in the tank for MSNBC don't, uh, they're not throttled, right? So the corporate news on YouTube is not throttled. You know that I know that they're not. They don't unsubscribe people from MSNBC's cheese channel or people who have MSNBC contract. Those people don't are not on the same algorithm that you're on. People, or I, I know. Are. I know Jimmy who. Viewers of this show have told me they've unsubscribed from MSNBC's YouTube channel and then YouTube subscribes them back. Back. Yeah. So they, because they want, uh, that's their, because MSNBC's videos are safe for advertising. So the more views they can get on that kind of news on YouTube, the better for them, because then there's not going to be a, a, a story written about how there was advertising on a Nazi's channel. Uh, you know, that that's what they're afraid of. Right. Or, or there was on some. And so what they first do is they try to discredit independent voices by calling them conspiracy theorists, even though the, the government and the mainstream news are the biggest conspiracy theorists in the world. Every war is one big fucking bullshit conspiracy theory. And the mainstream news is on board for every goddamn one of them. So was, but what they first do is that plus Russiagate was nothing but one big evidence free conspiracy theory to cover up for the goddamn Democratic Party being is bought and paid for and that there really isn't a, two parties that that's the thing that Russiagate really covered over. It made it appear that there was an opposition to Donald Trump. There was an opposition to Donald Trump personally, but there wasn't an opposition to Donald Trump legislatively there wasn't an opposition to donald trump politically there was just an opposition to him personally uh they they let his all his judges go by you saw they let him get his first his back to supreme court they didn't lift a finger to try to stop they didn't so anyway uh the i don't i think uh there's two ways it could go we we're gonna have to have a worker-led rebellion uh but again the the unions i think are, are almost worthless in america uh they they're just co-opted they're almost part of big business themselves and so we're going to have to have a worker led rebellion and I, I, we're going to have to have some, you know, the breakup of the social media companies. Uh, I, I don't see any of that happening. In fact, I see censorship is here to stay because it's been cheered on by the authoritarian left. Anybody who pushed Russiagate 
uh, whether they knew it or not, is was pushing for censorship of themselves. And as I just pointed out on Twitter the other day, Anna Kasparian uh, got censored uh, uh, for her show on Jacobin Mag. And I was just pointed out like, hey, when I was at the Young Turks, I tried to warn everybody there that they were that if you're pushing for censorship and Russiagate, it's going to come back on you and even harder. And I was proven right. And I don't know if you saw the Twitter thread, but uh they she still stands by that position which i just it's just dumbfounding even as the left is being censored themselves by silicon valley they stand by calling for censorship of people they don't like it's yeah. just, that's not how it works you don't you don't get to pick and choose who gets censored and who doesn't that's when you give that power away to fucking a bureaucrat without due process Hey, if someone's breaking a free speech law and someone's actually dangerous, uh, uh, then there's laws to take care of that shit. There's an attorney general. There's a yeah, district yeah. attorney. There's the police force. Uh, do we really have to rely on fucking Mark Zuckerberg to be our, our 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 police chief, our court, our judge, our enforcer, judge, jury, and fuck it, it's crazy. And what? and and even as it's happening to them, the left is still pro certain parts of the quote unquote left. Well, the truth is, if you're for censorship, you don't know it. You just gave up your fucking card to be on the left. You're not. No, and you're if, not on the left. And if you're a McCarthy smear, you're also not on the left. If you red bait your political enemies, you're also not on the fucking left. If you attack Trump from the right and want him to be more bellicose with our enemies, especially ones with nuclear weapons, you're not on the left. No. And it's like, and they're totally okay with it. They just, they're, they're, it's, it's literally... It's like Hedges put in his book, Death of the Liberal Class. It's the it's the liberal elites that are the biggest problem. I'm not excusing the awful, scary, some of the racist white nationalist groups. And, you know, Trump won't make call them domestic terrorists, but neither will Biden when he becomes president. He won't put the, he won't put them as domestic terrorists because that's, that's bad for business. And they let that happen. It's why like this, this happened. Uh, I'm going to put I'm going to share the screen up here. This happened Monday night. The Mueller investigation uh, investigated Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, and Roger Stone for DNC hacks. Previously, secret portions of the Mueller report show the special counsel declined to prosecute due to lack of evidence. They released this Monday night before this massive election, knowing full well that the media is not going to pick this up. I mean, so it's deliberately it's deliberately put in there. And 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 when you when. We share when I share it on this show, or you talk about it on your show, or we share it on our Twitter feeds. There's always some blue check Hollywood liberal that's like, "Oh, Julian works for Russia, whatever," and they don't realize the Hollywood. I've called some of these Hollywood, like comedy writer, these blue check people out. I'm like, I've said, if this was the '50s, you'd be selling out your fellow comedians uh, and writers to goddamn Joe McCarthy. Just like that, Graham. Just like that. They have no problem. Oh, it's my political enemy. Well, I'm going to do the most despicable thing you could possibly do as a Hollywood person politically. I'm going to fucking McCarthy smear my enemies. It's nuts. It shows you the integrity that they have. It's that not much. I mean, this goes almost every fucking person. I mean, one of my old friends in Hollywood was, was fucking doing that shit. It's crazy and it's despicable. And, the, you know, what I don't know how those people can call themselves artists. An artist is supposed to push back against the status quo. An artist isn't supposed to attack politicians from the right. Which it's, is what they which is what they were doing when you're attacking Donald Trump uh, over Russia. You're attacking Donald Trump from the right. You fucking morons. And so that's why, Graham, it's very easy for me to do the show I do. It's very easy for me to scoop MSNBC and, and fucking 99 percent of YouTube because they suck, because they repeat fucking CIA talking points and they don't have the balls to counter to do a counter narrative because that's going to get you some bad press. And uh, well, uh, I already again, like what I've said on my show, uh, I'm not one of these people uh looking to make a career in journalism or get a job in journalism or make friends in journalism. I already got my friends. It's called stand up comedy. I already got the pat on the back from everybody I ever respected in comedy. They already said, they, look at the blurbs for my book. All my heroes already said nice things about me. So I'm very safe in that. And I'm not looking to make new friends, which is why I can easily outdo all the other fucking news shows that are in it for real. Like they've been doing this their whole life. They went to journalism school school which is a fucking joke hey if you want to learn how to be a shitty journalist go to journalism school 
<laughs> yeah, I know. Isn't it insane? I want to talk about this. Um, first of all, everybody, welcome to the political vigilante. I'm here with my friend Jimmy Dore. Uh, please hit the like button. And if you're new to the show, please subscribe. YouTube is unsubscribing me at record numbers. So let's stick it to their algorithm. Also, I'm on rockfin.com slash which is a blockchain cryptocurrency platform. Um, and I, all my videos are up there for free and they let all of Jimmy's on there. Uh, it's a great platform. So we're talking about Hollywood. We've both lost friends of ours um, who we thought were like lefties like us. And what we discovered was they got into show business. There's nothing wrong with getting into show business. Like, oh, wow, I want to be a big TV movie star and, and be famous. Okay, fine. We all know that's what we're all chasing that to some degree or another. But when push came to shove, shove politically and socially they obviously like we were talking about are selling us would sell us out in a heartbeat and it seems like they want to be part of their establishment ruling class they they all we all started and some of these people we all started together in our in our 20s and the 90s and we we're all doing alternative comedy because it was like no man we don't want to sell out to the big corporate things and we sure we take these corporate tv gigs but we want to be real artists and then you see some of them boy they get a little money it doesn't matter what it is, some reality TV shows, whatever bullshit, if they give if they get that big TV money, that six and seven figure money, it's union. If they're, I mean, they're getting help. They don't need $15 an hour minimum wage. They don't need free health care because their union pays for it. They're not even pro union outside of their little, whatever writer's guild or actor's guild or director's guild. They don't even, they're not even out of it. They don't even like, uh, they don't care about actual labor and be, they're part of the problem. And they think they're so rebellious, and that's why they lose their shit when when people like you and I outleft them. They they can't handle it because they're used to arguing with like Trumpers on Facebook or whatever. Yeah, I was arguing with the uh, executive producer of The Simpsons, uh, Dana Gould, and he was again tweeting out the pictures of the kids in cages, saying, "Are oh, you going to vote? If you don't vote for Biden, this is what you're supporting. You're an asshole." And of course, it had to be pointed out to him that was actually done under Joe Biden. That's a picture from Joe Biden's administration. And so why why wouldn't you if you just spent a tenth of the time trying to pressure Joe Biden to become a better candidate as you did fucking punching left and punching down and holding people with no power accountable and trying to shame people or asking politicians to offer them something, anything for their vote. You're just a fucking rich, out of touch asshole. You're not a good person. You're a virtual signaling piece of shit. I mean, those guys like I love to point out Andy Richter. I mean, Andy Richter is one of the biggest virtue signaling cowards I've ever seen on Twitter. He'll He'll never use his platform to call out the causes of Donald Trump, but he'll pretend like he gives a fuck once that once it's safe, it's safe to, to fucking call out Donald Trump. Then guys like Andy Richter will do it. But if it took balls to call out Barack Obama for their immigration policy or Barack Obama for opening the Arctic to drilling twice or Barack Obama for his drone policy or Barack Obama for taking us from two wars to seven or Barack Obama for kicking 5.1 million people out of there. They didn't fucking do any of that shit. They're not no. going to talk about that because no. that would take actual guts and courage. And they're just a bunch of shallow fucking virtue signaling millionaires. Yeah. The, 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 the Trump or the uh, uh, Obama, oh, I'm going to drink some of this water. I'm, I'm drinking. This is iced tea, yes. but this is actually what Flint water looks like. And then he says I'm, it's not a stunt. He literally as he's doing a stunt. Barack Obama says this is not a stunt. And then my friends in comedy tweet out best president in my lifetime. Like they're not complete fucking assholes. I well, you chump. I, 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 it's so true. Like if these people spent the same, I mean, the same amount of time holding the democratic party ap accountable as they do yelling, yelling at us progressives and lefties, yeah. maybe the democratic party would change. Like I had, I had somebody call me, uh, the, a, a couple months into the pandemic and, and say, Graham, stop, stop what you're doing. And I thought he was joking at first. <laughs> this is a guy that I consider a friend. I've known him for a long time. And, and he's a black guy. And he's like, hey, man, I'm worried about my kids and the racism. I said, you know, that's that's obviously true. Yes. And 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 I had to, I listened to some of it. Like, hey, I don't know what it's like to go jogging as a black man. I don't know what that, he's like, I've had shit thrown at me. And that, that guy had just been shot when he called me in Georgia or whatever, he was running through that neighborhood and those two white guys, which is awful. But then I said, yeah, but that what just about started. that all this racism just started. Graham. Yeah, it, just started under, it just started under Trump. 
So the and, antidote to that kind of racism is to vote for the guy who fucking wrote the 94 crime bill, who brat, who fucking exploded the prison population, who made it harder for him to get out of bankruptcy when he goes fucking broke or gets sick or is in student debt, that or who kick him out of his house when he fucking can't pay. That's the antidote to Donald Trump. That the that Joe Biden is not the antidote to that. I know. It's like, and I'm like, so you're literally calling to blame the messenger because everything I'm saying is a yes. fact. I'm not bringing up conspiracies. That's right. And I'm like, when Obama. And I told him, I said, I voted for Obama when he dropped more bombs than Bush, 85,000 dead children. Do you want to talk to those parents? And he said, well, you know, that's black disappointment. And I was like, black disappointment, black disappointment. He goes, I go, that's, that's American privilege that you have American, yes. I have white privilege and I understand it. And I have to own certain things. I have, I was born middle-class. My college was paid for, I have boys, but that, well, what you know, you can't win them all. That's American privilege because you've never had your friends or family murdered from a drone. You've yeah. never been there's but we've never had bombing in this country. That's we've right. never seen it happen. You you don't know what it's like. And I'm like, I've been to war zones, I've seen kids uh on, on operating tables because they were playing in a minefield or they got hit with an IED. I know what war looks like. And you that's just that as a comedian. And and so, so when people say that's the thing that drives me nuts, when they just sort of say, "Well, I mean, Obama was Obama wasn't perfect," I'm like, "He murdered people, not perfect." I mean, and then they're I like, "Do that means you like Trump?" It fucking drives me insane. So when I would tell people the truth about RussiaGate, they would often say to me, "Yeah, but you know that Putin, he's a real thug." As opposed to who? As opposed to Bar Barack Obama, who has a drone program that kills ninety percent civilians. Yeah. Nine out of ten people he kills with a drone is an innocent civilian. What what does that make him? That makes him a fucking war criminal. He yeah. tur he, Barack Obama tortured Chelsea Manning. Barack Obama and Joe Biden prosecuted whistleblowers using the Espionage Act way more than any other president. What the fuck does that make him? That makes them thugs. Thugs. It's like when, when, when people were getting snatched off the streets in Portland by unmarked vans and everyone's like, look what Trump's America is doing. I go, that was signed. The NDAA was signed by Obama in December of 2011. Yes. That's, it's that, just. And, that, and he also signed Section 1021 of the end of end and uh, NDAA. And what did that do? That repealed habeas corpus, ladies and gentlemen. Why is that important? So then Trump can send his goons in and arrest you and never charge you and fucking keep you locked up for the rest of your life. All they have to do is say you're a terrorist. That's all they have to do. And we all, yeah. what did they? And, and they charge people at at the Standing Rock with environmental terrorism. So that they can they'll call anybody. You're an information terrorist. I, I'm an information terrorist. You're an information terrorist. All they have to do is say you're a terrorist, and they can take all your rights away and lock you up indefinitely. And who did that? Barack Obama. And why is that extra insidious? Talk about your black disappointment. It's because Barack Obama is a constitutional fucking lawyer. He knew exactly what he was doing, and then he handed that power to Trump. Yeah handed it to him he handed trump a a dictator's playbook yes. basically and no one wants to own it and i just like and then and then they're like oh you 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 guys want pie in the sky and this and that and i've, I've kind of i hate to be generational but it's really baby boomers and unfortunately our generation x is pretty stupid neoliberal like yes. pretty like and 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 they're like, yeah, but those Trump supporters are awful and racist. I said, yeah, and the ones that are truly scary, they're like driving their Trump cars, trying to run people off the road and threatening with guns or whatever. Yeah, that's scary. But I'm sorry, they are, you know, you don't even want to look at what caused that. They've been abandoned. They've let, been abandoned. Let me, and, I'll be, let me also make the case, Graham, about uh, when a guy calls you up and he says, hey, I'm black and I'm afraid of the racism, so Trump's got to go. You know, I predicted in 2016 when Trump won the presidency that he would deport less Mexicans than Joe Biden and Barack Obama. And you know that that has come true in spades, that they have, aren't even going to come close to deporting as many Hispanics as Barack Obama and Joe Biden did. So this idea that somehow everything Trump is worse than Barack Obama, people have no idea how bad Barack Obama actually was. No, they refuse to acknowledge it. And what bothers me is, I'm sorry, you're a college educated liberal. You should right. know better. I'm actually, I'm actually, I, you know, I, you, you should, you're supposed to be all Mr. Critical Thinking, Mr. Open Minded. You say, oh, the Trump voters vote against their own interests. Yeah, they do. You know, the, the, the right way. Everybody wing, does. Everyone does. The whole left does. <laughs> the, the left, the, the left identity politics gets people to vote against their own interests in a heartbeat. If I showed you a white male that put 
uh, 120,000 black men behind bars as the attorney general of the state of California, uh, you would never be excited about him as your vice president. Never. Right. And that's why they showed, like MSNBC interviewed those three black women a week before the election in Atlanta who were like, no, nah, we're not voting for Biden. We're not down with Kamala Harris. And then they were like, whoa, 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 hey, whoa, you're not the soundbite we wanted. Wait, hold on. And they won't, they won't wake up to this fact. And the fact that Biden is barely winning here, even if he does win, it's barely. It's he's, barely. He's, he's going he's to win by a hair sniff. And it's no, it's no sweeping mandate. And gee when you when the when fox news viewers want medicare for all overwhelmingly when like everybody wants ubi everyone's okay with it i mean that that was the thing they realized oh we can have all these things we want yes so, and, and and gee if you ran you know bernie was clearly cheated again they purge votes again the shadow app in iowa like I was on crosstalk with this guy. He was like, "Oh, Joe Biden won fair and square," and he said, "Oh, you shadow yeah. conspiracies." And I was like, Sh "No, the shadow app was an app used to count votes uh, in Iowa caucus." Uh, Pete Buttigieg funded it, helped fund it. Come on, like un they just. Graham, I just want to just give a shout out to Michael Dolan. Michael Dolan, who caught the joke that Graham let go right past him. Uh, the joke was that uh, that Joe Biden is going to win by a hair sniff. Shout out to Prop oh. Michael Dolan. Michael Dolan, he got that and he said it in your in your chat. So I just want to give a shout out to Michael Dolan. That's a good catch. You have a great uh, you have a great comedy uh, calibrator there. Good going. Thanks, Michael. Yeah, I was all wound up into a rant, so I missed that joke. But that's a good that you wound up by a hair sniff. Come on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the other thing too. Both of these guys have strong ties to Jeffrey Epstein. Not discussed. No one's no one's going to the corporate media. No talk about that why no. because the billionaires that are involved in this global sex trafficking ring own these big corporations that's right yeah. and, the, and the cia which is infiltrated all again all all the newsrooms they didn't even infiltrated them they're they're on fucking camera the, yes. they, they hire them to be on their on camera analysis no you're supposed to bring someone on to analyze the lies from the cia you're not supposed to bring on the liars from the cia to give you analysis you fuck you're bringing on people to give you propaganda of course they know that because they're owned by a handful of billionaires are there's just a handful of billionaires who own all our media in this country and that's exactly and if noam chomsky's taught us anything is that the chris hayes Rachel Maddow, Jake Tapper, and Chris Cuomo are there to manufacture consent for the establishment. They're not there to actually inform us and tell us what's actually going on, or else we'd have a fucking, uh, we'd have Medicare for all. We'd have a UBI. Uh, we wouldn't be living under bridges, and we wouldn't be we wouldn't be in seven fucking wars. Yeah, and we wouldn't be lining up for food. Food lines in the richest food country lines. in the world. Hey, let me just remind people that in a similar economic downturn, Joe Biden... And Barack Obama kicked 5.1 million families out of their homes in a similar economic climate to this. So it's coming. And Joe Biden's going to be president. I bet he does the exact same fucking thing this time. Uh, this time it'll be worse because thanks to the CARES Act, it will it won't just be homes. It's going to include small businesses. Right. Like they're going to they've already are kicking like in the in this SBA loan. They sent me this thing. You're approved, pre-approved for an SBA loan. And I read the fine print. Anything over twenty five thousand dollars, your business is collateral and they will collect on it if you don't pay. And I was like, oh, that's how they're going to get it. So I said, let's lower the amount to under twenty five grand. And I took the loan. So fuck them. Cause they, that's they, and, and the, they can't do it. And I said, this is what they're going to do. All these people are going to default on these loans, not to mention they gave $4.25 trillion hidden in the cares act, things that people like AOC voted for verbally. And she pretends like she's fighting for us, even though she's not bothered by the fact that Joe Biden wants to frack. She said that on CNN, not bothered by it. So she's a, she's a sellout. We have no, po no progressive leadership. Bernie sold out, Tulsi sold out, AOC sold out. Uh, they're going to pass some. They're fighting for some things here and there. Tulsi's got this new thing to try to pardon Julian Assange and Edward Snowden. Okay, Bernie is really good at tweeting. Man, that's going to help get things paid for. And AOC calls Pelosi mama bear. Um, but like, it's it's back to the CARES Act though. So they have this four point two five trillion dollars, and these big companies are sitting on it, waiting. They're going to snatch up all the commercial real estate. They're going to snatch up all the foreclosures and do what they did in 08. 
these management companies bought, and especially in California, they did this. One of the reasons the rents were so high, this is pre-COVID, they're starting to come down because everybody's leaving. But one of the reasons the rents are so high in California, the management companies bought up all these short sales and foreclosed homes and then started renting them. So they helped drive the rents up, which is why they, these big management companies were- and, Bar uh, and Barack Obama bailed out those companies on his way out the door. I don't know if you know that. So there was these companies, equity firms that had done exactly what Graham's saying. They bought up all these properties and they're going to run these huge rental properties, which is hard to do. And so they were going, they're, they're, they're going underwater and Barack Obama gave him like a couple of billion dollars on his way out the fucking door. And so what does that do? That doesn't just help his friends on Wall Street, the equity firm. What that actually does is that creates a barrier for first time home buyers because it keeps fucking prices artificially high and it keeps rents artificially high. So it's fucking renters and it's fucking first time home buyers. And that's what Barack Obama's final gift to the middle class was as he left office. Which now sets up this house of cards with a pandemic and an economic shutdown and no real UBI. Some people got unemployment. Some people didn't. If they did, it was it enough, whatever. Now, thanks to Obama and what you're talking about, that set up now this house of cards of the 30 million pending foreclosures that are happening. But at least the secretary of state is Steve Mnuchin, who could have been prosecuted by Kamala Harris when he was in charge of One West Bank. But of course, he donated to her 2010 attorney general campaign. So then when Kamala Harris had enough evidence to prosecute him and send him to jail the way Iceland did to their corrupt bankers, she passed on it. And then weird, another wacky coincidence, he he donates to her senatorial campaign. So then when she becomes senator, gee, what did was she the one who helped to prove him as secretary of treasurer? Yes, she did. She did vote for it. Go to cabinetvotes.org. So Kamala Harris is part of this lineage of the corruption of the Democrats and the Republicans. I'm mean, always I said Democratic Party is just Goldman Sachs with a rainbow flag. That's what it is. And nothing is going to change when this economic collapse and I'm watching financial experts saying this is going to be worse. And it's not just like socialists like Richard Wolf, who I like and respect, but it's like wall street capitalist guys are saying, Oh man, it is coming. This collapse is coming. And it's all going to be because no, there was no, did, did Obama put anyone in jail? Did he pass all this sweeping regulation? Nope. Dodd Frank, which is like a, a band aid no. and a shotgun wound. So how do you see all this playing out? Grab. First of all, I, I just realized that you 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 got a, you got one of those loans from the thing from the CARES Act, mm -hmm. and and did you put some of that into that sweet gray paint paint that you did for that wall behind you? Is that what that was? No, I just got it. Some of it's gonna go for my new TV. You fucking linen wearing jag off. So that's gonna fucking.